werewolf. So, so you bent it, you bent it over around my thumb. You bent it back. Now I want you to bend it around my thumb again, and then read the tea leaves and. and in your bowl, read the tea a, leaves in your bowl. Is it, I think, aren't you supposed to be the gypsy on the show? No, this is this is called accessorizing. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is my gypsy look today. Okay. See? Yes. Please. Okay. Oh. She tries oh, to wear as much color as possible. And the camera's day. running too, of course. Um, <laughs> good afternoon, evening, whatever. However you want. well, this is going to be on uh, Wednesday evening, so we'll call it. We'll call it good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good, yeah, good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Progressive Soup. My name is David Stevenson. I'll be your host along with co-host Emily Volpentesta. Hello. And with us, we have a return visit from Laura Volpentesta, who this time. Not as a gypsy, <laughs> but as a as a home schooler. She's a homeschooling parent. Thanks for and having me. And she's going to tell us about homeschooling, <gasps> and uh, we can uh, the audience can of course go from there and learn and do a little research on their own and and uh, report back with uh, with the with the pluses and the minuses they find in the notion of homeschooling. But there are certainly a lot of them. First of all, Laura. You sure you're not a gypsy? <laughs> not today. I, I, I'm okay. studying. <laughs> okay. So, I'm training. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, who are you and what the heck got you started doing homeschooling? Home I'm Laura Valpentesta. I'm a single mom of, of three children. Mm-hmm. I didn't... Um, I didn't start out thinking I was going to homeschool, although uh, even the natural childbirth thing, I had uh, kind of... It seems to run with the with the territory. So mm-hmm. I somehow f- had gave birth at this birth center that made me feel so confident about my abilities as a mother. Even just with birth, they just kind of let you follow your instinct. They didn't tell you what to do. Like I've had other births like that. So with with um, I happened to lose a job because I was due in September to have my first child. So I took a course at the. Center for Music and Young Children to mm-hmm. be a Music Together instructor. And it's only like a week long training. Music Together, which is that Mommy and Me children. Okay, yeah. So you're not teaching, which is what I love right away. You're not teaching, you're creating experiences to foster learning, right. experience, and joy. Learning through play. Right. So it's right. caregivers and children from birth to four, more or less, sometimes to five. And the, what I learned there was so amazing. To this day, every day, I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, yes. Learning through play, mm-hmm. um, modeling behaviors, which is like... Oh, okay. Yeah, explain, explain what that is. Well, I don't know if this is the best way. The first example that always comes up to me is that thing of, you know, if you see your child enjoying the music and you don't think they're clapping on the beat, and if you go up to them and you're like, no, it's like this, it's like ah. this, like, like, then they're like, oh... I'm wrong. I don't know how to do right. this. Oh, uh, how come I don't feel it that way? And the jerk. Oh, so you know, that's when he <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't <laughs> feel it. Or the other side of that is John Lennon when he did Instant Karma. Uh, and that starts that starts totally on the wrong beat. It's, oh, it's a song I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah, Instant Karma. Uh-huh. They started totally on the wrong beat, so right. that's why it's the song. It just throws everything off it, but it gives a different uh kept going. different feel to the uh Uh-huh. Different feel to the uh, to the whole thing. So this concept of learning through play, trusting your gut, mm-hmm. going with your, and I realized, you know, they say homeschooling is always this religious choice, and I'm like, well, I'm not doing it for religious reasons, but I am doing it for a spiritual reason because, uh, wait, <laughs> I lost my train of thought because I want them to know that. No, no life is worth more or less than another. Like in school, I was always told that I wasn't enough. I mm-hmm. wasn't. I wasn't. Right. But in homeschooling, I'm just feeling like you follow your course. You follow what you're interested in. You follow your natural abilities. And granted, at school, it's kind of good because you get this smorgasbord, this buffet to pick from, and then yeah. you're like, oh, I didn't know I was going to love science. Right. Right. Hopefully, homeschool can offer that as well. But I love that they can just roll with their natural curiosity, get into a zone, do math for three months, and then drop it for a year. You could learn a whole year of 
school math, for example. And then go back later on and, and see what... Come back to come it. Come back to it and see what it's like, I guess. See what, see what you remember and, and uh, see where you want to go uh, on the next part of the math journey. Not always, yeah. Instead of forcing against your grain all the yeah. time and thinking, oh, there's always something wrong with me. What if something's always right and you go with it? Mm-hmm. I think it's a great, for me, that's a healing thing. Like, I didn't complain about school. I wasn't one of those people who was like, nothing I learned in school mattered. I never questioned any of it. But I definitely know that in my career and even in college, I didn't need most of what I learned in, in high school and stuff. I didn't use it. And so that's okay. It's, sometimes I think it's just a, a broadening of experience. Mm-hmm. But I know that um, I know that, and this is I, I made sure with my daughters mm-hmm. that um, schools have a tendency. When you brought up math, schools have right. a tendency to teach math differently to boys than they do to girls. Oh, I'd heard about that too. In yeah. a single classroom. Like yeah, that the the uh, the uh, the um, what the girls are are told is be precise. Mm. Get it right. Get it. You know. Find, find that answer. Get it exact. Where boys are taught more to approximate and more to, uh, you know, kind of glom onto a, a, the answer to a problem by. Does, does that make sense? Uh, you know, if, if the number seems like it, well, it's going to be a big number for the answer, you know, somewhere between, I don't know, 1,000 and 2,000. And, and then you go back and you actually do the problem. Because uh-huh. if you don't do the problem, if you do the problem just looking for that precision, you're not yeah. going to realize it when you're off. Yes. But if you've, you've estimated to begin with, you, yep. you kind of know, you kind of have a sense that, oh, that's, that's kind of out of the realm of what I, what I expected, so I, I, maybe I'm not doing it right. Boys are taught to do that approximation, that, heard that, that estimation, and girls are taught to be precise. Huh. So, um, Which means if you get it wrong, you're like, ah, you know, no, big panic instead of being like, oh, that doesn't look yeah. right. Yeah, approximation is a good thing. I mean, you know, we, pro- we draw approximations all the time. I when, do, when and I'm stuff. a girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's that's not the way yeah. that they were teaching it to, to, to girls, mm-hmm. and now maybe they do now, and I hope they do. But um, I where did you hear that tidbit? That's really interesting. It actually was through observation that did, I that I came to that conclusion. Because huh. I saw in class in math classrooms, I saw teachers actually giving girls sort of a different you know different kind of approach to uh, to finding an answer. To everything. Like in when correcting them, or actually in the classroom, or yeah, huh. yeah, actually, actually looking to them to to be more precise and boys to be less precise right. because you know boys are you know more more gross motor coordination than girls are generally. So you know it's the same thing with thinking. Mm-hmm. You kind of you kind of find a roundabout way to it's get like to big something. Chunks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, 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 it's like throwing a dart at a dartboard. <laughs> And at least you know you hit the dartboard. Mm-hmm. And then you work backwards from that to get the exact answer. But knowing that it's the dartboard you're aiming for, not the wall over there. Mm-hmm. And that's how they, and that's how they were, were teaching the girls. You, you know, you've got to get it exactly right or you're, or you're completely wrong. Which makes you really more likely to fail, huh? Oh, absolutely. And that's probably, yeah. that's probably part of, you know, girls, that's why they say girls aren't good at math. Right. It's not that they're not good at math. It's just they're taught to be not good at math. Mm. And they're living down to somebody's expectations. And to make sure with my daughters that they, that they didn't go through that. Because ah, because you had seen that, so you pointed it out to them early on? Yeah, and we did a lot of, we didn't, you know, we didn't homeschool per se. We had the kids went to, went to the public schools in Bethel, and then both, both girls went on to uh, Worcester School uh-huh. later on. I went to in Bethel. But they were, um, yeah, but they were... Um, I lost my train of thought a little bit, but they were, um, but but they were, um, I, they you, were. You, you, you find that like, can kids them. learn, and kids learn much more anyway, much more at home than they do in the classroom because they're at home more, and they're not interrupted every time they get into something. Right, they have a little more time to right. actually work through work through a question of, right. of one sort or another. I teach at a university at studio classes, and I used to be in six-hour studio classes, and now I teach three-hour studio classes, mm-hmm. and I know that at the end of a three-hour class, I can see it. Everyone's starting to get the zone. Mm-hmm. Everything's starting to look really good. And if they could keep going after that for a few more hours, everything would be awesome. But like as soon as they're getting to that point, it's over. Bell rings. So, so take us through a homeschooling day. What is, what is a day... 
Well, there's also there's homeschooling. People say that because everyone understands it, but there's also unschooling. Yeah, how much structure? How little structure? I've tried that. The more structure, I find. Uh, I think we a lot of us struggle back and forth. Some of us have curriculum, mm -hmm. curriculi. <laughs> Some of us don't. I haven't. Sometimes I have one textbook that we work through each day, like one little chapter. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, less structure is better because my kids seem to be so interested in whatever they're interested in. Um, and yet you might have a child who actually craves more structure, and then you follow that. But definitely, sometimes, some days, we all have our days where we're like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm not doing it right. But then you have other days where yeah. you're just like, I'm so glad I made this choice. And um, one thing I love is this sense of rhythm. I just feel like the whole family gets in a really nice mm -hmm. rhythm. And my kids were in school for like kindergarten first and a little bit of second. Yeah. And I remember, especially as a single mom, I just felt like my life became so chopped and separated into pieces that there was no integrity to it and I was not thriving feeling that way mm. and when the kids kind of came home and my life began to look like one life you know I felt good and I think they felt better too I don't know I just felt like it was like you know get them on the bus and get you didn't have to ask them what you do in school today well you know they never my kids never answered that question it used to drive me nuts mm. I pick them up at the bus you know what you do today not a word all of them Hmm. I mean, the two who are yeah. older. They would never say any. I don't know what that means. Or Did your kids ever tell you what they did at school? I never asked. <laughs> I would I ask. Left, I left it up to them to, you know. Share what they want. Right. Yeah. So maybe that's, you know, the best approach because I never got an answer to that question either. But I know that my son, for example, he just looked. I would go to lunch at school. Yeah. Because you could go in for lunch, and he'd be sitting all alone at the end of the table with his little sandwich. And I'd be like, oh, we were home. We'd be having a blast. Right. It just didn't feel good when I saw them there, but it's different for everybody. There's different structures for everybody. So we think of, we think of homeschooling as kind of um, kind of uh, the area of um, religious um, fundamentalists generally. You know, people that people that are that are you know completely turned off and don't want their kids to be. To learn stuff in school that they don't want them to learn, so they they, hmm. they 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 avoid that by by keeping the kids home and teaching them what they want to teach them. Mm -hmm. At least, at least as far as um, you know, uh, you. It's not that that prayer is outlawed in school. People say prayer is outlawed in school. It's not, but it can't. What it is is that, that the teacher can't lead the class in prayer. Mm -hmm. No one, Logic no one in a position of authority can can maneuver kids. To, um, to separate the church. Yeah, to, to yeah. That, that's for home. That's for home and and that's okay. ed educations for school. And yet, I, one thing I always think. I mean, I don't want to talk too much about this stuff because I don't know how people get. But like, mm -hmm. school is is a religion. Like, there's a whole worldview there that you're living and absorbing, and yeah. that's what we were talking about. John Taylor Gatto, the he's one of the big advocates of. Education reform, not necessarily homeschool, but education reform. He was a New York State uh, Teacher of the Year like twice. That's not the guy that was all coded in Teflon. No. <laughs> oh, that was um, <laughs> not John. Uh, John Gotti, not <laughs> Gatto. <laughs> That's the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> he was Italian, but okay. <laughs> John, okay, John. So this John Gatto was Teacher of the Year. Yeah, and he did this amazing acceptance speech. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really prepared to give all these details, so I may be off in a give us of a, detail. Yeah. But give he us an said, overview. He said, you know, I didn't teach history, science, social studies. No, I taught, and I think it was 7 or 13. I'll tell you exactly what I taught. Competition, emotional dependency. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, all these things about, like, you know, uh, all these lessons. Oh, uh, blind... Blind authority, respect for authority, you know, mm -hmm. blind respect for authority, let's say. Right. Obedience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all these lessons that when I saw that list, I was like, that's what I learned. That's what I learned. And um, I think, you know, that atmosphere of love isn't there mm. that you could have at home. Not everyone wants to homeschool. Not for everybody. Right, right, right. <laughs> but if yeah. you can, and I think so many mothers, you know, we're told that we're not enough for our kids, but you're like, I remember thinking, if my kids are homeschooled, they're going to be seeing grandma and grandpa a lot, and mm -hmm. that is a library. 
Right. You know, when are we, I remember thinking, are we going to wait till Grandma and Grandpa are 90 and then maybe they get to visit on the weekend, you know? I was like, we get to see them several times a week, and that's, that's education. There's right. a, that's family history. The, so I just think it's a question of knowing that ev- all people are valuable in all ways, and all kinds of education are valuable. I refuse to believe that your life is worth less or more than mine. You know, your experience is your life, and I feel that they're all equal. So that, I would say, is my spiritual reason, you know. And I don't like being at school and feeling like someone was always better, right. someone was always less. Mm-hmm. You know, who's deciding that? I mean, so what, if, what if there are subjects, like if I had kids, you know, that I didn't feel I could teach, like, you know, chemistry or, you know, calculus? That's a great you know? question. So what do you do in that There's um. Tutors. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. When I started homeschooling, the internet wasn't even like it is now. Right, it's like right. Khan Academy. You know, you can do a whole high. You can do high school online now. Just right. like whole True. curriculum. It's incredible what you can do. Anything you want to learn, you can. Right. Entrepreneurship, marketing, business, um, anything. And then you can always take it further somewhere else. But now, more than ever, education is so accessible. Right. Good education. Yeah. So, and, and another thing is, like, locally in Connecticut, we have all these homeschool groups right. that structure, that have classes, and you can sign up. Ah. So, of course, there's an economic level to that. You've got to be able to pay for, Right. Okay. You know. And that yes. helps with the socialization, too. Socialization. Sorry. We talk about the that. word. <laughs> Anytime you say homeschool, people are like, what about? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not sure the lessons I learned. Yeah, about what about socialization? Yeah. There's probably a good and a bad side of, of all that. Both. Because yeah. Because first of all, how natural is it to have like a million kids all the same age and right. stuff them all in one area and pit them all against each other? Right. I don't think that's so natural. Mixed ages. We're not even comfortable in mixed ages anymore. We'll be like, oh, she's 10 years older than me, and is she three? We're right. so used to being sorted by age, and mixed age is a diversity. I love diversity. Yeah. Age diversity, experience diversity, class, whatever. So um, socialization, I'm not sure what I learned in school, especially as an adolescent. I don't know how great that was, yes. having the blind leading the blind, right. you know, teens. Who are finding themselves, you know, just as confused as the next teen leading the way without having mentors and cliques. Socialization. Thing is, all the kids are sorted. Okay, kids are in schools. Old people are in old people's homes. You know, parents are at work. Babies are in the nurseries. Everyone's sorted. And one day I saw a school bus. I was following a school bus. And I I always remember this day that it looked like a little yellow vacuum cleaner. (laughs) Sucking up all the joy out of the streets. That's what, you know, the laughter, the creativity. What do children bring to our lives? They bring us so much, and we have to, like, fight to get to them. God, maybe I'll get to see them before dinner and before homework, after after activities. It's so hard to see them, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. And it's even as, since I homeschooled, one of my daughters went to middle school. She started last year, and that was the day I was really thankful. I said, I, I'm grateful for every second that I had because now she's gone. Yeah. <laughs> she's gone. Now, the notion of seeing grandparents on a more regular basis, I, I think that's something that's probably caught on. Yeah. Periodically, it catches on in school where, where grandparents are encouraged to come and Good visit, mm-hmm. bring your grandparent to school, and, and, and grandma or grandpa can can certainly impart some some True. knowledge or wisdom so much. On, the, on the entire class. And kids get a chance to compare and contrast that somebody happens. else's grandma and grandpa yeah. against theirs. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's kind of interesting. Well, that's such a richness. If that's happening, that's yeah. awesome. You see, you see it pop up periodically, and then it kind of you know, wanes. And, then, it, and then eventually somebody will say, hey, you know, we haven't done that in a while. Let's do that. Well, there's so many impassioned people about education. It just seems like once they're in the institution and the business... They just have to meet these requirements. They can't get to do the stuff they love that much. I mean, you well, you've been a teacher, so you know better than me. Well, you've been a teacher Sometimes. too. Sometimes, yes, yeah. in a different setting, but yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and even with my kids. What am I saying, right? But uh, 
bringing the family in this can be a great thing but you have to have someone home right no one's home anymore right. so who brings grandma in you if know? there are grandparents a lot of kids don't you know people move away from their families now so some kids might not even know anyone so older true. than their Grandma's parents so true grandmas across the country yeah, yeah. So many nuclear families now, especially yeah. this generation, right? People are just yeah. you grow up. You and I guess I guess there's something to be said either way for yeah. against the nuclear family versus the uh, the family that's 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 together. They're where even to the point where where grandma or grandpa actually live in the same house. Yeah, that's how it was. You see a lot of you see a lot of that. Not as much as we used to, but it's it's. I think people recognize it when when that situation is is Can work. with them. Yeah, yeah. It's it's Can it's help a it's, uh, it's an interesting um, kind of interesting having grandma or grandpa around. Yeah, yeah. And certainly, if that's like really toxic, then yeah, you opt for something else. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but if it if it isn't, yeah, yeah you want to. Well, I remember our grandmother. Um, we would go to all the old Italians. Always had their you know. The parents, yeah. you know, the Usually old, old Italians, <laughs> right? Usually, because the women outlived the men. But <laughs> that's that's a statistical fact. It was just it was just the way it was. They you barely know? even spoke, but you felt their presence. Yeah, and they were sacred somehow. Yeah, I mean somehow. Did it you was, call her Nani? No, no but it was always Guma, 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 Christine, uh-huh. Guma. Christine, Guma Rita, Guma Ida, Guma Hilda, Guma oh, okay. Gumba. Yeah. Gumba, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no Italiano de, de Betel. I know a little bit, a little, little, little bit of Italian. Well, here's one last little tidbit about homeschooling that I think is interesting. I find that I think that in college and in all yeah. and in high school you're institutionalized, right? Mm-hmm. And then you're spit out. And you're like in this world that you haven't been a part of because you've been in school. And I just feel that a child who's, who's not in school can be, start their business at the age of 12 that grows by the time they're 18. They already are what they might right. be, let's say, rather than, you know, doing everything everyone tells you. This is my story. Mm-hmm. I'll do everything you tell me, everything you tell me. Take care of me if I do everything you tell me. Right. But then you get out there and you're like, you now don't was, have your own will. Was this a public school or a parochial? <laughs> well, I, I got a good laugh. Because <laughs> no. I know that the parochial schools, I've never, never gone to a parochial school. Me but everyone that I know that went to one talks about it being much more rigid mm-hmm. and much more structured than they a can public use the school. Catholic guilt. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, put that on you. Yeah. But how do you? How are you sure that your children are exposed to all the subjects you're exposed to? In like, you know, it's a big world. Yeah, the physics, school chemistry, them to everything. Well, I mean, you're exposed to certain subjects. Yeah, you know, and I, I think that if, how do you make I sure your kids are exposed to everything? I told, my, I always tell myself, I can't. Uh, some people do great in school. Some right. people do horrible mm-hmm. in school. Right. right. Yeah. Some schools are great for some kids. Some schools are. Oh, so right. I can't really expect myself to absolutely be perfect. I can only do right. my best. Right. I have a better way of wording that, but it's not coming out. But like, they're going to thrive, or they're not going to thrive. They could do terribly at school. Right. They could yeah. Do terribly at home school. Right. Right. So, yeah. You know, I have my intentions in place, and if it's not working, you make adjustments as well. Is there any connectivity to the to the public school as far as you know having good question. core curricula that yet that you're expected to um, that you're expected for them to be able to, to learn and to answer questions on a on a test? Like, I haven't pressed enough to find out, but I I would hope that we would should be able to homeschool, especially in Connecticut where we have this like right to homeschool. We mm-hmm. should be able to take as many classes as we want. At the public school mm. without having to do the whole thing huh. and honestly I'm yeah. not sure that's how true. that works mm-hmm. that's not exactly what you asked yeah are they going to taking are, tests are, are they going to be taking the same tests at, at, at right. the end of the day that the public school kids are, are are taking to 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 measure their growth right. and their uh, expertise level in the different subjects at, at different levels. And this, I'm not totally sure. Like, I know they can do their SAT and PSAT. Right. All there, yeah. there you go. There's they a standardized test. Yeah. Yeah. They want to go to college. Yeah. yeah. They want to go to college. I think any parent that's pushing hard enough can can get those, yeah. you know, take that test if they want. I, I'm not yeah. sure yeah. about this, but I think... Um, Tutors. And then, like I said, that high school online as well. But your local public school, right. I haven't found that there's a big rapport huh. there. But I don't really know. I, I never pushed for it. 
Um, I think as I'm getting closer to college age, whether we go college or not with the homeschool one or right. the one who's in high school goes on to college, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have a steep learning curve right there. But I know I have a lot of community around me with online, which is great. So right. I yeah. have people whose kids have already gone to college who can give me information and I can give information. Just like this whole yeah. people helping people down the line giving information. So I just haven't pushed that very hard yet. Now back to the socialization part of it. Mm. Are, are your kids getting? Are your kids getting enough? Um, beat up. Beat up and bullied. Yeah, right. Are they getting? Are, getting, are, they, getting, kids are they getting their fair share of, um, <laughs> of of all the ugliness that we learn from other kids? It's a great question. <laughs> I have a thriving you know, neighborhood with a lot of kids, and they all play in the courtyard there. Oh, right, okay. right. The condo. It's such a blessing. Yeah. Of course, they're not home till three. <laughs> right, of course. And yeah. then we have we schedule park days with all the other homeschool parents. So when we go, the parks packed even though it's off hours kind of thing mm. um, I even have this amazing group that um, we pay a certain amount and a whole bunch of families we all go on this one day we rented a Girl Scout campground and we we spend like a I think it's five hours or six hours we all go and we're all together so lots of socialization there but with the teens it's a little harder because things start to dwindle so you really do have to make more of an effort like Traveled to New Milford to take a class there with other teens. Right, hmm. right. And that's why I think my daughter at eighth grade was like, I just want to see all the people. Because our group got very small at the teenage. Right. And she's such a great kid. So if you want to do it, go. Not what I want, but go. And she thrived. No, it's, it's oh. true. But I, socialization, you know, I just always say the same thing. You know, socialization at school can go really bad. <laughs> yeah. It did for me on and off, you know. I learned good stuff. I learned stuff I really didn't need to learn, and then I had to unlearn Love it. it. Mm. We're going to come back and do a second show because we're just getting into this a little bit. See what I said? You just get in the groove? <laughs> we're just, we're just, getting, we're just, getting, a, just getting started on this subject. But, but when we come back, I want to ask you, um, amongst other things, how do your kids, what, what experiences, you know, you have, your kids know a lot of kids, obviously, that go to public school. You know, they have their, their play dates and everything else yeah. and their get-togethers with other kids that are homeschooled. Mm -hmm. But when they get together with other kids that go to public school, if you know how the conversation, but don't answer yet right. because we're going we're gonna, okay. gonna to wrap it up with that thought. But um, whatever your kids may have told you about, you know, what comparisons they've, they've heard from those kids that are in. Uh, but wait, hold that thought, because we're going to come back. This has been Progressive Soup. I'm David Stevenson. Uh, we have a co-host, Emily Volpatesta, and our guest, Laura Volpatesta, who, who uh, homeschools her kids.